In the last video, we built the base of this Steve Jobs real animation. But that was just the beginning. Today, we're taking it to a whole new level. We're adding motion, custom logo reveals, and all the subtle animation details that give it that commercial grade finish. And what's cool about this part is that everything you'll see today connects perfectly with what we did before. If you're enjoying this series and you've learned something new, let's see if we can hit 5,000 likes on this video. First things first, let's get our background set up. Since I want it to be exactly the same as in part one, I'm just going to open my previous project and copy the background nodes. And just as a quick reminder, this background is simply a mix of a light gray and a dark gray background node. Okay, let's add our first text. For now, this will be completely static with no animation. I'll just type out my sentence and quickly adjust the font and color. Because I use a 3D space in most of my videos, let's convert this into a 3D scene right away. We'll need three key nodes, an image plane 3D, a camera 3D, and a renderer 3D. Now, select the Image Plane 3D node. In the Inspector, go to the Transform tab and decrease the Z transition value to push it back in space. That's all it takes to set up our first text. Next, let's build that grid background. I'll bring in a new background node. I want it to be a perfect square. So in the Inspector, under the Image section, I'll uncheck Auto Resolution and set the width and height to the same value, like 1080 by 1080. Now, add a rectangle mask, set the value of the width and height to 1, then uncheck the Solid box and increase the border width to create an outline. Now for the really cool part, adding circles to the corners. Add an ellipse mask. Now for a pro tip. In the height section, type an equal sign to create the expression. Then, drag the small plus icon onto the width parameter. Now, the width and height are linked, so we'll always have a perfect circle. Next, set the center X and Y values to zero. That places the circle in the first corner. Now, copy this mask and paste it three times as an instance. For each new copy, right-click on its center property and select de-instance. Then, change the values to move each circle to a corner. And just like that, you have four circles on the corners. And since they are instances, if you change the size of one, all of them will change together. To give this grid a sense of depth, I'll add a new background node and connect it to our grid's background, which will create a new merge node. Drag it to the viewer and make sure the new background is in the background input. You can press Ctrl plus T to swap them if you need to. Now, in the new background node, set the alpha to zero. Then, in the merge node, decrease the size and change the edge setting to mirror. Instantly, you get this volumetric repeating pattern. Let's add one more detail. Add a new ellipse mask and connect it to the blue mask input of the merge node. Make it oval shaped and increase the soft edge to the maximum. Now, convert this entire grid into a 3D layer by adding an image plane 3D. In its transform settings, push the Z transition way back to send it into the distance. For added realism, add a Gaussian blur node and decrease the strength. This fakes a depth of field effect, which is less heavy on your PC than using the camera's focal plane settings. Time to animate the camera, and this is very simple. After the camera 3D node, add a transform node. On the first frame, I'll increase the Z transition value to zoom the camera out, and on the last frame of the animation, I'll set it back to zero. But here's the most important part, the easing. Open the spline editor. I want this animation to start fast and end very slowly, so I'll create a curve that looks something like this. And that's the result we have now. Next, I'll create a white circle using a background node. In the inspector, change the color to white, then click the ellipse mask icon to connect it and shape the circle. Then, I'll turn it into a 3D object using an image plane 3D. So, decrease the Z translation value until the full circle is visible on screen, but make sure it stays in front of the text. 
On the frame where I want the animation to start, I'll set a keyframe for the size at zero. Then, I'll move forward about 20 frames and increase the size to its final look. In the spline editor, press S to smooth them, and then Ctrl Pulse T to open the ease controls and set the ease in value to around 60%. Next, I'll drag the logo file into the workspace. I'm going to copy the image plane 3D from the circle and paste it to use for the logo, but for this one, I'll increase the Z transition value even more to make it feel closer to the camera. On the last keyframe, I'll adjust its size and position to fit perfectly inside the circle. Now in the keyframes tab, I'll select the logo's keyframes and drag them forward a few frames to create a slight delay. And before we move on, let's add an underlay for each section to keep our node graph clean and organized. Now, let's create that cool line drawing animation. Add a new background and a polygon mask. Draw a rectangle, but start with the top right point. For some reason, the animation I'm using doesn't work correctly on the last point created. Now, uncheck solid and increase the border width. Select all the points and press Shift plus P to publish them. Pin them in the inspector. Now, add a rectangle mask and connect it to the polygon, then shape it into a small box. Right-click on its center, choose Expression, and link it to the first point of your polygon. Copy this rectangle node and paste it three more times as an instance. For each copy, de-instance the center and link it to the next point on the polygon. Now make sure there are no existing keyframes on the polygon mask. Go to the end frame of the animation and set a keyframe for all four points. Then, go back about 20 frames, select all the points, and drag them all to the starting point. Now you have this line box animation. To animate the cursor, bring the cursor image into the workspace. Now, connect it to the output of the background. Then, add a transform node after the cursor image. First, scale it down to make it look more realistic, and then move the pivot point to the tip of the cursor image. After that, select the polygon mask where we have the animation and go to its last frame. Then, select the transform node and change the position so the cursor hits the bottom right box. Add a keyframe for the center. Now, reselect the polygon mask, go back to the first frame, and in the transform node, adjust the cursor's position so it follows the box. Next, add another keyframe for size. Then go one frame backward and decrease the size slightly. Copy that value, move to the last keyframe of center, add another keyframe, then go one frame forward and paste the same value. This creates a realistic zoom effect. Now, add another transform node. Make sure you're still at the last keyframe of center in the first transform node. Then, select the new transform node and add a keyframe for center. Move a few frames forward and change the position however you like. In the viewer, select the new keyframes and change their shape from a straight line to a curve for smoother motion. Finally, select the polygon mask, go to the first keyframe, return to the new transform node and add another keyframe for center. Then, go a few frames backward and repeat the same steps as before. And that's what we have so far, but we're not done with this step yet. So, select the three nodes the transform node and the polygon mask. Then open the spline panel, select all the keyframes and press F to smooth them. Also, increase the easing to make the motion smoother and more consistent. Now we have a clean, natural animation that follows perfectly. To reveal text with this animation, add a text plus node and write your text. Copy the animated polygon mask as an instance and connect it to the text's mask input. In the inspector, de-instance the border width, softness and solid properties. Then uncheck solid, decrease the border width and increase the softness. This will create a beautiful soft reveal. Now you can play with the softness value to get the best result. 
It's time to add this to our scene by adding an image plane 3D node and connecting it to the merge 3D node. Then, drag the media out node into the viewer, select the image plane 3D and move it backward along the z-axis. Finally, adjust its position as you like. And that's what we have so far. For the second text element, we're going to work smarter, not harder. Copy the entire node group we just created for the first text, everything except for the cursor nodes, and paste it into your workspace. Now, connect its output to the output of your first text group, which will automatically create a new merge node. With this new merge node, you can easily change the position of the second text block and place it exactly where you want it. Now, to sync the line drawing animation, First select the copied polygon mask and open the spline editor. Go to the frame where you want the animation to start, then drag all the keyframes to that point. Now you'll see the animation aligned, but for some reason the instance polygon mask needs to be recreated again, just like before. Not sure why that happens, but it's necessary. Anyway, don't forget to change the text of the second one. The cursor animation would be the exact same steps as the first one, so we'll skip that to save time. After the animation is done, we can add that expanding circle effect. Go back to the white circle we created for the logo and copy its ellipse mask. Paste it as a new node. Before we move to the next step, let's unpin the polygon mask. Then click on the circle mask again so we can see only its own set. Uncheck the solid box and increase the border width to create an outline. Now, just like before, open the expression and link it to the height. Set a keyframe for the height where you want the animation to start. Then move forward a few frames and increase the value to make the circle expand. As always, finish it off with a smooth curve in the spline editor, and that's it. Now, what if you want to reveal multiple items at once? Easy. Add all of your item images to the workspace and merge them all together. Then, add an image plane 3D node and connect it to the merge 3D node. Using the image plane 3D, move it backward along the Z dimension to position it in 3D space. Next, add a single ellipse mask and connect its output to the mask input of every single item. This will make them all appear within the same masked area. For the animation, add a transform node after the first item. Now, move to the frame where you want your animation to begin. Set a keyframe for its size at zero, then move forward a couple of frames and set it back to its final size. Then, open the spline panel and smooth the animation now, copy that animated transform node and paste it after each of the other items. Use each item's transform node to change its position, arranging them in a nice circular shape. Open your keyframe editor and start to offset each animation a little bit forward in time to create a staggered reveal. And that's it. For the final section you saw at the beginning, it's actually just a combination of all the steps we covered across these two videos. The background is the same one from the previous edit. The black box animation is the same technique we just created, only this time without the cursor. The circular elements are inspired by Iman Gadji's video, which you can check out here, and the text animations are the ones I explained back in part one. My goal was to teach you some new, powerful techniques that you can apply to your own projects. I really hope this helped you learn something valuable. See you in the next one.